show you guys how to waterproof a shower. We're using Red Guard for the uh, membrane over here. What it is is a waterproofing membrane. It's almost like a paint, but when it dries, it's like rubber. You're gonna wanna put two coats everywhere, that's what they recommend, and then a third coat on any hole, crack, or nail. Before I did this, I prepped it with a mesh, and I made videos on all these, so if you wanna check my channel, and make sure you get the right mesh, because this one's for drywall, and this one is for backer board. Reason being they're different, don't use this one, because when it gets wet, it will start to break down in about three to four years. There is another product that people use, it's fiberglass mesh. It almost feels like paper, but it is fiberglass, and you can use it for your joints and put the red guard over it. But what I did, I'll try to go close up and show you guys. You can see the uh, fiberglass mesh in here. You just fold it over, and I added a coat of white thin set mortar with polymer modified. So the reason being it's polymer modified makes it a lot stronger and you want to use that for showers because if water ever leaks behind your tile, it will um, uphold way better than just the regular gray mortar that you're going to use. So make sure you get the early one. Ask a lot of questions. There's so many different ones on the market. So we're going to go ahead and start red guarding this and also make sure before you start red guarding that you got your finish real nice and smooth. I use scraper here after I put on the coat and what I did is just scraped it real nice and hard, harder than that than I was doing and got it to a nice smooth surface. This isn't going to be bad, this is, everything looks good. You don't have to sand this down and make it perfect. Reason being when you run your mortar over it and go to lay your tiles, um, this is not going to affect um, when you go to put your tile down, this little tiny hump. So just make sure it's nice and smooth that you're, you don't got no big bumps, big ridges, stuff like that. So. Make sure that your shower is nice and sound and solid. What I mean by sound and solid, it means that everything is solid. You can't have shaking. You don't want um, your shower to start cracking after the, after. So like my shower curve is nice and solid. I got screws, every two screws. Um, again, you can check out my channel for how to do all this. I've taken videos of every single step here, even installing the uh, shower cartridge. The niche, everything has been installed. Like said, let's get started. Red guard. We're gonna apply it with a roller. You can just use a paintbrush if you want, but I want to get it done quick, so I'm gonna use a roller and then a paint. So the first step being, I'm gonna hit all the spots that are cracks, joints, and places like that with my brush, and then I'm gonna come back over it and paint it two more times after I've done all the cracks, joints, and everything like that with my roller. Um, if this is your first time doing this, the reason you see a gap here and you can see my pan liner is because you're not supposed to put your backer board and let it touch your shower pan. Reason being is, if you soak this with water, water will wick up, you'll get black mold in about a month. And if you tile over that and make that mistake, even professionals on YouTube do it, don't copy what they do because what you call that is a non-professional being that if you have your shower completed about a year later, you'll start to get mold and you'll clean it up and then bleach it and two weeks later you got mold coming out again in your joints and you won't understand why it's coming out in your, your, uh, in your grout lines. Reason being is because you got black mold behind your tile. But this is a good way to avoid it. It's the best way to avoid it. Leave a gap in between your backer board and your uh, shower pan. So let's get started. We're going to start painting all the, the parts that need to be painted. So let's do this.
about putting in all the crack joints. Um, if you guys are not doing this yourself, but you actually hired somebody and you're just looking at this video to see what's going to be happening, if that person who's building your shower is not using Red Guard or some other type of um, waterproofing membrane, you better make sure they use it. And if they um, disagree on using it, send them on their way. Because tiles and grout um, always get water behind them. I said always. It will get through there eventually. So what you want is a waterproofing membrane to stop that from getting black mold behind your um, behind your tiles. And a big question for all you do-it-yourselfers you're going to have is, am I going to put Red Guard all the way up in um, around the drain uh, drain flange? Yes, I am. You will put about three layers on your shower pan. You'll see some people only put it around because they're worried about creating a mold sandwich. But if you use three layers on that floor, you will not get water underneath this right here. And you can run a water test after you've got your third layer of um, Red Guard on here. Fill it up with water, let it sit for three days, two, three, four days, whatever you want until you feel safe and you'll know that water will not get underneath this barrier right here. I'm just gonna show you guys a close up view of what's going on in my niche and whatnot. Just make sure that you get a thick layer on here. And I'm gonna hit this with two more coats that you're gonna watch me do on time using my roller. I just wanted to show you guys um, the results after the uh, Red Guard. I added this video in there only because I had some people commenting about me not doing something correctly. But just for your information, I've done over 300 jobs um, tiling. Never ever had a call back. So for all you haters out there, uh, you know, it is what it is. But uh, Flex Grout Admixture for your grout. I'm just adding in some more tips in there for you beginners. Flex Grout Admixture. Don't use water, especially in your shower pan. Um, if you want less crackling, cracking, um, ask your hardware store for it. You see the rubber on there that I'm pushing with my finger. It just becomes like a hard Elmer's glue in there instead of the water. You'll get a lot less cracking in your grout joints in the future. Also, you're definitely gonna wanna seal your grout when you're done. Um, you could pick up a sealer, talk to your hardware store again, and they'll recommend the correct sealer for you. Usually there's um, an ad mix made for the type of grout that you buy. That way you're not mixing with some other manufacturer's grout. Say you buy one manufacturer's grout and a different uh, ad mix. Anyways, over here I'm cleaning up my shower tiles. Try to use a two by two inch tile when you do put it in your pan. It's a lot easier and better to work with. Um, as far as your slope goes because when you got a slope going um, and you got say a one inch by one inch tile it's it's harder for it to work with especially even a bigger tile you'll if you could put that in your head to notice the difference on a bigger tile if you're using uh, say a four by four tile or an eight by eight something like that you don't you can't capture that slope is what I'm trying to get to um, I'm using a black grout here the customer wanted a black grout being that 
they want less cleanup or mold or color changing in your grout to show. So that's why I went with a black one. Um, this is my floor over here that I put in. Took a couple days. You got your niche built into the shower. Um, everything is pretty much almost ready to seal. Beautiful looking shower. Glass door installed. Hey!